No, Jared, what's our point? Okay, one, zero. How do we get our slope? What do we do with one, zero? Plug it in. So you do dy, dx at one, zero. Okay, what do you get when you plug in, Jed? You do get zero. Very good. So then what would your equation of your tangent line be? Y minus zero equals zero x minus one. Then what do you do with your funny decimal? You would plug it in, but think about it. If I end up timesing it by zero, what's going to happen? Zero. It's just y equals zero. Okay, and remember, zero is a number two. <coughs> okay, part B says solve for d squared y dx squared. So now we know what that means. Okay, that stands for the second derivative. So what do we need to do with this? Take the derivative again. So d squared y dx squared equals. Okay, when I take the derivative of y, what do I get? Dy one dy dx. Very good. Do you have to write the one? No. Okay, but just remember, anytime it's a y, you have a dy dx. Now, for the second part of this, what rule are you going to need to do? product rule. Very good. You're going to have to do product rule when you take the derivative of that. So my u is going to be 2x. My v is going to be y. If u is 2x, what is u prime? Just 2. If v is y, what is v prime? dy dx. And then from there, what do you do? u v prime plus v u prime. So it would be plus 2x dy dx plus 2y. Very good. Okay, then from here, it says use it to determine if your estimation is over or under. What am I plugging in for my point? d squared y dx at 1, 0. Okay, remember your notation there. Now, remember, you should not be plugging into dy dx again. What was dy dx at 1, 0? Zero? 0. So remember, this is what I'm going to plug in here and here, because I already found that. So this is going to be 1 times 0 plus 2 times 1 times 0 plus 2 times 0. What do we get for our concavity? Zero. Can we tell if it's concave up or concave down? Then you would say not enough information. If it was concave up, what would your answer be? Over or under? Under. under. What if it's concave down? Your line falls over. Okay, last part asks you to solve the differential equation. dy dx equals. Now remember, you are only allowed to solve if you can separate x from y. You're not allowed to add or subtract things across. How can I rewrite this so that the y is separated? G. Maybe you could see. G, C. F, yes. I was trying to give you a hint. OK, you can G, C, F out of y. Do you see they both have a y? So watch, if I write it like this, well, no, you're just pulling the y out. So what would be left from the first term? 1 plus 2x. And now I can pull the y over to the other side, separate, blah, 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 blah. Okay? So where is the y going to end up if it used to be in front on top? Now it'll be on the bottom. So 1 over y dy. On the other side, I have 1 plus 2x dx. Technically, it's still in parentheses. You can leave those there. Then what do I do after I separate? Separate, then integrate. Very good. Integrate here, integrate there. What is the integral of 1 over y? Ln y. Very good. On the other side, what's the integral of 1? x. What is the integral of 2x? x squared plus c. What do I do next? You need the absolute value sign. Okay, I do need the absolute value sign. What am I going to do next? 
to get rid of the ln. E. e both sides. And when I E something with a plus C, where does the plus C move? That's right. So Y equals C E to the X plus X squared. Okay, from there, what is my ordered pair? So this is my general solution. Y equals one when X Saying that backwards, but yeah, so one is the X, zero is the Y. So then I would plug in. So it would be zero equals C E to the power of X plus X squared, which is one plus one squared. What does C have to be so that when I multiply something by it, I get zero? C has to be zero. Then from there, yeah, I didn't mean for it to get so many zeros, but you get the idea. Okay, so you have homework 10, homework.